Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the user relationship function in DAX. Now, the user relationship function has the ability to activate the inactive relationship between the two tables. Now, that might sound like a jargon, but I'll ex actually explain to you via a small case that I have, what do I mean, and in what scenarios would you run into an inactive relationship? Please take a look. So here in uh, the as a data, I have a very simple sales data, which is where I have a date column, I have a refund date column, I have a product ID column, and I have a unit column, and I have a price column. Although it may seem like that the refund date is completely empty, but it's not actually. I just have to sort the date in the ascending order, and you will see that at some places we have a refund. So this product was sold on 3rd January, but it was refunded on the 1st of March. And this data obviously has been connected to my calendar, which is nothing but my date table using the date column, which, which is a very, very simple relationship between the two. I've also written a measure, which is where you can see that I have done a sum X of the sales, go in every single row of the sales table, multiply the price with the units, and that's what gives me the total sales, which is actually dragged here in this pivot table across the months and the years. Now let's say that somebody asks me a question, hey, could you maybe also calculate the amount which is refunded every single month? That means I would like to find out that what is the amount which is being refunded every single month. So if you have a refund date mentioned here, you calculate the amount. If you don't have a refund date mentioned here, that means that product was not refunded, all right? So why don't we actually maybe write a measure? So I'm gonna say new measure and I'm gonna write a measure for refunds, so total refunds. In the measure, I'm going to say, hey, why don't you calculate, calculate total sales, but I would like to calculate total sales for only those values where you have the refund date column as not blank, right? So I'm just going to mention refund date column here. And the trick of the calculate, which is just an extra thing that I'm doing here, is that if you do not, I mean, you can very well write that not equal to blank, that is also going to work. But if you just kind of leave that out like this, this is going to be calculated only for the filled in values and not the blank values. This is a little trick with the calculate function and you can actually very well use this trick. So if you have a column which has a blank value and a filled value and you only want to calculate the values for non-blanks, you can just write the column name in the calculate function and the calculate function will automatically skip the blanks out. All right, so that is the calculation. So I'm saying, hey, calculate total sales, but for only those values where the refund date is not equal to blank. So I just say enter and I drag that measure into my pivot table right here. Now this seems to be correct, but it's actually not correct. I'll give you the reason why. So if I just go over to my data right here, and if I kind of scroll through this column, and maybe I'll just sort it in the descending order, and you will find that the last date on which the refund happened was 27th October right? And the product was sold on the 11th of August. So I certainly should see October value in my pivot table. So you can see that here, I don't see any October value in my pivot table. I've scrolled right to the end of this pivot table. The reason why I don't see that is because as of now, the relationship between the two tables is linked to the date column of the calendar date as well as the sales date. That means what you're seeing this as a number, this is nothing but the products that were sold that got refunded. I mean, these are all the products that were sold that got refunded, but they were not necessarily refunded in the very month that it comes up and shows up the value here. Why? Because we are not even considering the refund date as a valid metric for calculation. So what I have to do is I'll have to kind of actually start considering the refund date, not as the sales date as a you know month against which I would like to calculate refunds. Obviously, if you have to start calculating the refunds against the refund date, and if you have uh, the year and the month being dragged from the calendar column, you obviously have to link this to the date as well. And if you kind of link this to the date table again, you will see that you form an inactive relationship. Now, actually the date has two ways to travel to the sales table. So it has one of this, this way, which is actually the hard line, uh, which is your active relationship. It also has another way, which is the dotted line. So it kind of gets confused and it forms this dotted line, which is an inactive relationship. And you can actually activate this relationship for certain measures in your calculation. This is going to be your primary relationship, which is going to be active at all the times. And this can be actually activated using, you know, user relationship function. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to my total refunds measure. In the total refunds measure, I will say that I'd like to do a user relationship of the calendar date and the refund date. Typically in the user relationship function, you write one side of the relationship at the start and you write the many side of the relationship in the end. But I've also seen that it automatically, you know, does the correct calculation even if you have the other way around. But 
but just follow the norm just write the one side first and the many side in the end so i do that i write the user relationship that means i'm trying to tell that this calculation will be happening for only those dates where the refund date is mentioned that is point number one and this calculation will not follow the standard relationship between the two tables which is sales date to calendar date but it will follow calendar date to sales refund date instead so i am kind of overriding the relationship which is the standard relationship and activating the inactive relationship now you have to understand that this relationship should be created before you write the user relationship function if the relationship between the calendar date and the refund date is not created this is going to return you an error so i have already done that and if i now commit to this formula take a look in the pivot table that i now start to see september and october values as well these are all the products that could have sold in any of the previous months but they actually got refunded in september and october all right so that was a little thing about the user relationship function certainly if you have any questions please feel free to put them down in the comments i'd be more than happy to help thanks so much for watching this and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye